We've learned how to do the crossover method where we are given the name of a compound that's ionic and we want to determine the formula of that compound. Recall that that method involved writing the ions down and then crossing over the magnitude or the numerical value of the charges and then simplifying in the end. When we start to look at naming compounds, in particular ones that involve a multivalent metal, we're going to need to identify the charge of the metal ion within the compound. So in order to do that, we're going to do the reverse of the crossover method. So given the formula, we're going to reverse that process so that we can write down the anions. and the cations. There is going to be an extra step where we check our work. Let's look at some examples. So if you're given the formula CuCl2 and you are interested in knowing what the charge is on the copper, for example, within that compound, we're going to do the reverse crossover method. So we know there's a one, there's one copper ion and there's two chlorine ions. So I'm gonna reverse those. So doing the opposite of the crossover method. So the two becomes the charge on the copper and the one becomes the charge on the chlorine. Now, how do we know that this one is positive and this one is negative? We need to remember that the first ion in an ionic compound is always our positive one. So we're always going to be positive before we're negative. Now, the other step that we need to do is we just need to make sure that there hasn't been a simplification and that the chlorine ion or the anion is in fact correct after we've done the crossover method. So chlorine is supposed to have a negative one charge based on its position on the periodic table. So we are fine and we can be confident that the charge on the copper in the CuCl2 is two plus. Let's look at another example. FeO. So there is one iron and one oxygen. The first is positive, the second is negative. So that leads me to Fe plus O minus. So now I need to check the anion, the oxygen. We know based on its position on the periodic table, it's supposed to be two minus. O2 minus is the correct anion for oxygen. So we're gonna have to adjust these in order to correct that. And we're going to do that by multiplying both of them by two. So we're going to end up with a two plus and a two minus. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, well, why did that even happen? Why, when I do the reverse crossover method, do I need to check my work? Well, remember, ionic compounds are always shown in their simplest ratio. So if we think about how this formula was written in the first place, I had Fe2 plus and O2 minus. I concluded Fe2O2 needed to be simplified to, my apologies, FeO. So essentially, what did I do in order to make this simplification? I had to divide by two. So if you think about it, it makes sense that we have to reverse that process when we do the reverse crossover method. Now I'm going to look at a couple of examples here that involve polyatomic ions. This might be something that you want to come back to later if the polyatomic ion throws you off a little bit at this stage, right? but it is still helpful to have a look. Okay? So PBNO32, so I've got this group of atoms that has a charge, and so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do my reverse crossover method. My two is gonna come up as the charge on the lead. Positive 
before I'm negative. So there's the positive charge. And then the NO3 now has a one minus charge. Okay, now it's important to kind of distinguish the three down here that applies to there being three oxygen atoms. And then the whole thing has a negative charge. When we look at this polyatomic ion on the list, NO3 is supposed to have a negative one charge. So we're fine. So we know that within this compound, the lead has a two plus charge. We've got one more example here with CuSO4. I've got this polyatomic ion that I recognize. So I'm gonna break this up into Cu plus one and SO4 minus one. Now, when I look up the anion though, sulfate is actually SO4 two minus. So I can see this must have been simplified. So I need to correct for that. And I'm going to multiply the charge of both of these by two so that I can correctly identify that the copper within CuSO4 has a charge of two plus. At this stage, this is just a small skill that we're working on. You'll see that it'll be useful when we are naming ionic compounds that involve multivalent metals. Thank you.